Hey there, this is Gabriel. I am showing you my commander deck with Balthor as commander, and I will play a multiplayer game with it. Um, so, quick, quick uh, recap of this deck. This is a new deck of mine. Nothing too special, really. Um, Balthor caught my eye as a commander, so I tried a couple different things. My first try was Relentless Rats. Um, I had like 35 Relentless Rats in the deck or something, and then you bring them back with Balthor, and they're just huge and so forth, right? Fun times, but not a very good deck, honestly. Um, the Rats themselves are just vanilla beaters, and so while occasionally you just end up doing 100, to 100 damage or whatever, a lot of times you, you just have a bunch of crappy cards. So that didn't go very well. So went for more traditional route. There's nothing that special in this deck, honestly. It's kind of a lot of staples and stuff, but there's a lot of synergy, is what there is. Um, and it has a very clear cut goal. The goal being to grind everybody else down, get a big bunch of fatties down, and win with them um, after grinding. Um, by grinding, you want to kill all the creatures and draw as many cards as them, hopefully. Um, partially we do that by getting more creatures in the graveyard and then getting effects off creatures. So what I'm going to start with first is the creatures of the deck. Obviously the idea is you get mana to get the creatures back. Um, so we got Sepulchral Primordial, which is, I wanted to test him out because it's Gatecrash and it's a new card, but he's sort of on the border of being cut. One of the th things this deck needs to do is consistently be able to uh, exile graveyards. So, and this is not very good when, you're ex when you want to exile their graveyard, but it's alright. Um, it also is a 5-4 Intimidate, which is not bad either. It can bring in the beats if it needs to. Um, it's also good just to hard cast. Uh, being able to get two or three creatures off of him is insane. So far, the best I've done is two, and then everybody conceded, which is kind of unfortunate. Anyways, next. Roots Card Demon. Awesome come into play ability. Really helps you uh, do what you need to do. Um, plus, it's a nice body, but being able to reuse this guy a couple times in a game can be huge. Harvester of Souls is pretty awesome. Um, I have a lot of effects that kill other creatures, and I have a couple sacrifice effects where everybody sacrifices something. Blood Gift Demon doesn't have a come into play ability, but having him in play is really good. It's just, it's just another way to get card advantage. Um, Kagamaro is a recurrable with Balthor, it's recurrable Wrath of God basically. Um, gets around protection from black and can get most creatures. Sometimes there'll be a 10 10 or 20 20 or something, you can't kill it. But generally, it gets most creatures. Um, Alright, Kokusho is. Recently unbanned, and I wanted to play him out. I have yet to actually have him die in a multiplayer game. But, I would assume it's pretty good. In a four-player game, you're looking at, you gain 15 life, they all lose 5 life. And if you could do that once, or tw once it's good, twice it's amazing. I mean, uh, you know, it, gaining 15 life is pretty good. This deck doesn't have a ton of ways of gaining life. Alright, Shriekma, good coming to play effect, easy to get him in the graveyard early on. Um... And having fear, is, it does mean something. It kill, helps kill planeswalkers and stuff. Puppeteer Click is a good way to get cards, get black and red creatures out of the opponent's graveyards. Um, Balthor hits all black and all red creatures in all graveyards. So this is one way of getting, of exiling one permanently from a graveyard. Um, plus, it's a persist creature with flying. I mean, it can block and it can attack and so forth. So it's not horrible even without the ability, but with the ability, it becomes excellent. Especially because most of the time you're going to get a creature that's also going to have an ability. Right. Slum Reaper is mediocre until you start until you you're doing it like two or like when you have like three or four creatures coming at once, and one of them is a Slum Reaper, one of them is a Necrotal and you stack them properly, you can really screw people over. Uh, Dark Hatchling is another version of Necrotal, basically. Non-black, it can hit artifact creatures, and it has flying, which is relevant. Necrotal is the classic. All right, uh, Disciple of Bolas is pretty awesome. Um, 
works really well with something like Kokusho. Also works well with Puppeteer, Click. Um, I mean, it works well with most things. Get the creature back into your graveyard if you want. Draws you cards, gains you life. I mean, it does everything you want. Think we um The Flying Death Touch is pretty nice. The Dredge is sometimes good, but you don't always want to use the Dredge because other people can have graveyard removal. Bone Shredder is another Necrotol, but it gets in the graveyard easy, which is good. Um, Shell Dread is just awesome. I hate this picture, but you know, it was like 10 cents for the promo, where it, and it's like 2 bucks for the regular one. So I just said screw it and got the promo. I probably should not have done that because I hate this picture. It's just stupid. Um, anyways, this card's pretty gross. It works well with all your stuff. Uh, Sentinel. Evancar is really good versus token and weenie decks, um, and it's kind of good if you're getting out three or four creatures, it, it ends up making a pretty big difference. Um, Anawan hits a lot of my own creatures, but that doesn't matter too much. Um, you know, if it comes back around to my turn and everybody loses one, I'm losing one, and but I'm killing three also. Butcher Malakar, Malakar is a good way. Um, it's just a good card to have and play in a black creature deck. Masker Worm is another Wrath type card. Um, works really well with Ascendant Epic card. Especially if you get them both come out at the same time. All of a sudden all their creatures get negative 3 and they take a ton of damage. Micaeus is sweet, sweet, sweet. I do have some creatures, uh, some humans in here. But it's really the uh, Undying part that's awesome. It lets you cast, cast like... Uh, yeah, Mutilate or something. You'll lose your Micaeus, but then you, everything else survives. That's pretty sweet. Twisted A-Bomb is a creature that is also a land. You, um, He's just really... I mean, he's kind of what this deck wants. He, he, uh, you know, he gets in your graveyard early, and then you get him out later for free, but you already got land out of him. And then he's a decent body. A 5 3 generator is nothing to scoff at. Greyborn Muse, help me draw more cards. I do have more than one zombie. I have, well, these three. I think I have four or five. I don't know. Anyways, I have at least three zombies plus Balthor. Um, so sometimes it draws more than one card. Usually just one. But that's nice. I mean, having a card that lets you get ahead so easily is nice. Um, and it's recurrable. All right. Since I'm on a black, I have a ton of artifacts, obviously. Uh, the basics. With skull with soul ring, um, skull clamp actually works pretty well in this deck because I don't because I plan on having stuff die repeatedly. Um, sculpting steel is just general utility relic. I don't tend to like exiling all graveyards. I will once in a while, but I try not to. Um, what it re it's really in here for is to sit on the board and pick away at the black and red players' graveyards. Um, it's not great, but it's not horrible either. Nihil Spellbomb gets rid of somebody's graveyard before I pop Balthor. Nevedoros Disc is just sort of a fail-safe. I don't have an Oblivion Stone because they're like 10 tickets or something right now, and I don't want to buy one. Uh, but Oblivion Stone will be better, and it would also Oblivion Stone would also be fine in addition to Nevedoros Disc. I do have a lot of permanents, but it's fine if they get destroyed. Uh, it's not because you don't really have any way of getting rid of enchantments in this deck. This is like the only way to get rid of enchantments. Um, and that's not a good thing. That's that's the deck's biggest weakness. Like somebody puts out uh, humility and moat, we're dead. You know, we just can't, we can't do anything about it until we get the Nevenrolls disc. I mean, we can tutor it up the Nevenrolls disc, but it's still a bad. It's still not good. Uh, Mind's Eye, multiplayer card draw, Mind Stone. I don't have that much acceleration in here. I'm not. It, for me, it was between Mindstone and um, the Snow Artifact, um, Cold Steel Heart, I think it's called, um, because I'm playing Snowlands and Scrying Sheets. But Mindstone's a little bit better. Being able to sacrifice late game is pretty useful. This deck can get to a point where it has enough mana where, you know, that one extra for Mindstone is pointless. So, as a sacrifice outlet later on in the game, it's good. And getting it on turn two or three is fine also. Lightning Greaves, there's not much I really care about protecting 
but once in a while it's nice. Um, something like Greyborn Muse is good to protect. Uh, so Jet Medallion is just a general acceleration card. It's 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 like playing a Mind Stone early on, and then as the game goes longer and longer, it, it, it can end up being two or three mana in one turn, which is you know good. I mean it could be cut, but it doesn't hurt playing it on playing it early is really nice, and playing it late it can do stuff. It's probably better than a land. Gauntlet of Power is just another way to pump up the creatures. Um, most of the creatures in this deck are not actually that impressive on their own. They're not like one hit kill creatures. So, but you, what you do tend to do is get out like three or four or five at a time. So being able to uh, pump them all up a little bit is nice. Plus, extra mana is never bad. Uh, Expedition Map goes in every single commander deck that I've ever made and will continue to do so. Darksteel Ingot is kind of weird in a monocolored deck, but it's indestructible, which is nice. It's mana acceleration. Um, I don't like playing mana acceler acceleration unless, like, like Charcoal Diamond, which is what most people would play in a mono black deck. The problem with Charcoal Diamond is if it gets destroyed, you've lost out. Um, and it only produces one mana, whereas Jet Medallion can produce more than one mana later on. Mindstone you can sack to draw a card, and Dark Feeling it doesn't get destroyed. So I think it's a it could be some other it could be other stuff, but I'm happy with it as Ingot. Um, Cage Sun more mana Excel, Brittle Effigy. Uh, Beseeches I got some tutors and stuff. I got Buried Alive, which is a nice thing. I use I end up tutoring for Buried Alive a lot, um, and then I'll I'll. Buried Alive plus Balthor, and get whatever creatures I want into play. Um, okay, what else we got here? Get some more tutors, Diabolic, so forth, some more mass land destruction, some more mass creature destruction. I don't play mass land. Um, mutilate, Staples. Um, targeted removal, there's not much. You don't need that much. Because the creatures do it for you, but I also put it in Victim of Night because it's just super efficient, and it doesn't it doesn't say non-black or non-artifact. Um, and tendrils, because tendrils can end up gaining you like ten life at some point in the game. Um, I also interesting cards. I got a Leyline of the Void, works really well, um, even without my commander. It's just a good card. Um, I got three Planeswalkers, both Lilianas. Well. Both the cheap Lilianas. I don't want to spend 30 for Liliana the Veil. But uh, Liliana Dark Realm is pretty awesome in a deck like this. People don't really care about it either. If you get to the ultimate for this, which I've done twice, you're going to win the game. Uh, Karn is Karn. So that's the deck. Karn, oh, Karn's my other out for enchantment. That's what it, Karn is. Um, and I think it's funny to restart games. <laughs> So that's it. I'm going to play a game in a second. Okay. Got a game started. Three player game. Um, we are going to keep this hand. It's kind of, well, I don't know. So Riku, Avacyn, and Balthor. Um, this hand's all right, but I'm going to mulligan. It's not great. This hand substantially worse. Now I wish I had kept. The problem with the other hand is the Cabal Coffers was useless. Alright, this hand's fine. Um, Twisted A Bomb is a land early on, so that's good. And it's got a cantrip and this and stuff. Um, so yeah, everyone mold a bunch because the MTGO uh, shuffler is defective. Get these players mixed up.
Um, I don't want people quitting, regardless of whether or not they have enough land or not. No worries. You know, I don't I don't play decks that are like turn two combo decks. So for me, it's I just want people to uh, I just want to have a real game. I just, I want interactive and fun games. I don't want games where it's like combo out, yay. Um, cards like Avicen could be a real problem. I do have a couple outs for Avicen I have to keep track of. Um, Riku not so much of a problem. Ooh, Bites of Flourishing is fun times. Fun, fun times. Um, I actually like this card. Any card that lets you play multiple lands I like a lot. Um, in this case, let me go ahead and play this down. Not in a great position here, but drawing two cards a turn is fine with me. If I get a lot of, uh, that's not good. Um, if I get a lot of land out, I'm in a, I end up in a great position. Avacyn's going to be a real problem. I don't. I have, I have like three or four ways of taking care of it. Not enough. Might just use an Ihel spell bomb right here just to draw an extra card. Try to get to a point where I'll be able to handle whatever Avacyn puts out. Um, I can make actually I, I have a couple extra ways. I can I can make him sacrifice it too. I uh, don't really want to play anything here. I could play this for the cantrip. I guess I'll do that. I'm not too worried about the graveyard stuff here. This guy's not going to be playing that many red creatures. Um, and this guy has nothing that Balthor affects. And I have no creatures in my graveyard. Oh, I do have a creature in my graveyard right now. So I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, I do have a creature in my graveyard. It's one of the reasons I don't like this card so much in my deck. Um, it's not bad, it's it's just not great. That's really bad. That doesn't matter. This is really bad. This makes no difference at all. Should put this on it. Odd play. So I'm just gonna play Butcher Malakir and Skull Clamp. So, 6-3 flyer, which is pretty bad, but, um, you know, if it dies, I, I, they both sacrifice and I draw two cards, that seems good. Plus, it makes all my other stuff, if I get out more creatures, it makes them better. It makes stuff like sacrifice effects a lot better, um, like Fleshbag Marauder, they end up, oh, that's horrible. Uh, I guess I should have not skull clamped it. Fleshbag Marauder, they end up um, sacrificing two creatures. Now I'm going to get attacked. He's going to put out an equipment. I am basically dead. <laughs> um, no, that's not true. I just need to draw cards. Just need to draw something relevant.
guessing he's going to play the green and black sword. Oh, blue and red. Whatever. It's always a sword. Nobody ever does anything original with equipment. Well, at least I don't have to discard. I don't really care about taking a few damage. I do find it odd that that's all he did. I mean, like, why wouldn't you just play Abyss in there? Seems like a better play to me, but I could be wrong. I have no idea. Abyss is just one of those overpoweringly strong commanders. Same with Riku. Riku's pretty insane. I'm in a really bad position here. That's kind of funny. Well, that's good. I guess Riku is not around for a turn. Riku's really insane once you get him going. Um, Abyss is just insane because indestructibility is so good. Will, I guess more lands is a thing. Um, I could play this. Doesn't really do much. I could play this and then be able to sacrifice it. I mean, it would do a couple damage here, and I could sacrifice it. It's also a, a creature. It'd be a 7-4, which really couldn't block this. You just put more equipment on it. Um, I'm going to play it just because I can draw some cards off it. Uh, I could play more land. Uh, Alright. Maybe I should have not tapped this one. I don't know. Probably. I, I, I like leaving open the high market at all points at this time. This guy's played two instant speed exile spells. Exile spells hurt me pretty badly. Um, so, yeah. I'm fine with this. Now, if he targets it, I'll sack it. I'll, pro I'll probably just sack it at the end of turn anyways, at the end of uh, the next turn. What the hell does this do? Destroy up to X target artifacts or and or enchantments. That seems good. Slow. Extremely slow. All the verse stuff, the, there's a whole cycle of those, and they're all slow. I'm being attacked by the giant, yay! I will block. If I get the opportunity. Let's see what you got here. Yep, Feast of Famine, cool. So my deck does have a ton of, like, 
wrath effects and stuff, but I actually have to draw them. Um, so far I haven't drawn any. And I'm guessing he's going to play his Avacyn, which leaves me with Black Sun Zenith. Awesome. Yeah, I pretty much stopped playing equipment. Um, I'm playing Skull Clamp and one Lightning Greaves in this deck, but all the swords I stopped playing. They uh, promote boring games because they're just better than everything else. So the whole de the whole thing just becomes getting out swords and attacking because nothing else is as profitable as doing that, and you know that's fine and so forth, but it's not fun. I mean, how many times are you gonna do this? How many times are you gonna win with Stone Hero Giant before you're just like, yeah, like tutoring up unlimited amounts of swords? It's just kind of boring. I don't know. Whatever. To each their own. Boring to me might be fun to somebody else. Exile a card from your hand, return a card from your graveyard to your hand, but shares a card type. That seems good, but he has no cards in his graveyard. And I have Relic out, so whatever. Whatever. But yeah, exchanging a card in your hand at one at, at a late point in the game for a card in your graveyard seems excellent. At this point, I need to get a tutor or something, I'm not sure. Tendrils will not do it. Well, no, it won't do it. That's not good enough. Definitely playing the temple. Go ahead and play Balthor. Buried Ruin on top, and that doesn't help me at all. Um, let me discard the Reliquary Tower to the uh, sword. All right. Uh, putting 
cold clamp on Balfour to do anything. So I'm going to use Balfour during his attack phase to uh, make his guy smaller, I guess. really bad shape here. I need a tutor, or I need a blackstone dentist, or a mutilate. Mutilate would be good. Alright, so I'm going to use Balthor, and then I'm going to need to sack this to draw a card. That seems right. If this isn't countered. I don't think it's a very good card to counter. I mean, he's going to lose Swift Foot Boots, Soaring, and Holistic Wisdom. None of those even help him. Huh. So I know what card I have coming up next is the land where I can get an artifact back to my graveyard. Alright. Go ahead and regenerate that. I'm not even going to use the uh, relic. I just decided I'm not going to use it because I want because the land that's coming up next um, will let me get back skull clamp, which can let me start stacking my stuff and so forth. Um, I made this guy's smaller with uh, massacre room. Yay. Still need mutilate or black sun zenith or a tutor for either mutilate or black sun zenith. Huh, he's attacking that guy now. That's good for me, I guess. So yes, yeah, uh, another sword. <laughs> so lame. All right, I don't like swords. <coughs> I did think it was funny that the sword of War and Peace was worth like $45 and then went down to like 5 tickets. I found that really funny. All those people paying a ton of money for them when they were at their high point just to lose that money a month later. Uh, I think he did that after the sword of War and Peace trigger. That might not have been the best time. Wow. Puts him down to 8 life. So I also have tendrils to gain back 12 life or something. Um, so I'm not totally dead. I mean, I have two. I have a couple turns to find an answer. Oh, he cast the light tutor. Awesome.
We do have a normal amount of land in this deck, and I've drawn quite a bit. It would be nice to reverse that trend. I know I have a land coming up on top. That gets me back to Skull Clamp. Still give, so I could draw, I draw four cards next turn. And I'll have at least eight mana to use off those four cards. At least nine mana if I want. Because I'll have the Reliquary Tower. Well, I guess he gets to attack with a bunch of equipped stuff. Take advantage, huh? <laughs> well, I think he just wins the game, because I don't think I can do anything. I could be at 30 life, but see how he attacks. If he wants to kill me, he can kill me. He's just going to kill him with just commander damage. That would be funny. That was, that's what I would do if I was him, I think. Just commander damage and gain 21 life. I think that was a bad attack. He should have attacked with just Avacyn, in my opinion, but I could be wrong. There is some cards that would have, that could have, there is a card that could have got him, uh, Wing Shards could have got him if he just attacked with Avacyn. Pretty nicely done, though, on his part. Alright, so he condemned one of them. He condemned, I don't even know what it was. The Battle Grace Angel. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's the worst of them. He destroyed his own feast, sort of Feast of Famine. That's pretty good. And it kills the seed form he used. Oh, I see. So he could block. He did that so he could block the um, stone hewer. Stone hewer is totally bugged. If you look in the upper left, it says, like many who dwell in. I don't know what's up with that, but big surprise, it's bugged. That was a hell of a turn on uh, Cynic's part. Hell of a turn. I think he may have possibly messed up with the attack if he had just attacked with... Well, if he had just attacked with Avacyn, he would have had to condemn his own Avacyn. He would have had to destroy the Lightning Greaves and condemn his own Avacyn, which would have been pretty funny. Um, but as is... Still alive, unfortunately. I can finish him. I can also kill the dark, the this guy on top of that. I think I have to finish him. Oh, 
Alright, so I can give him negative X, I can make him lose life and then kill, and kill this. Target player, target creature, one black, two black for the casting. That's how many is that? Eight? That's six. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. That's how you deal with Abyssin, I guess. You're going to copy this? Oh, he's going to bounce his guy. That's fine if that's what he wants to do. Good game, sir. Alright. Probably should have played the Buried Bruin. I don't know why I didn't play it. But that's fine. I didn't play it. I didn't play it. One's coming up. Nice to see. So against this guy, I think I'm actually in a good position. I wish the uh, the card drawing enchantment was still in play, um, but other than that, I think I'm fine. <coughs> That's really annoying. <coughs> <coughs> if he tries to use capsize on any of my guys, I just sack them. So, get that skull clamp back. I think he might be going for the capsize. Awesome. It's tough to keep track of all this stuff in Commander, so you're able to get rid of stuff like capsize easier. I don't really, I, you can't really blame him for that one. It just happens. It's really tough to see everything. So he's got no cards in hand at this point, and I've got. Well, tendrils for 13 life if I need to. Uh, I'm going to draw two cards a turn, and you can't really 
kill my stuff at this point. If he tries to play his commander, I will kill it before it gets equipped. I want this, I want Riku to get to the point where it's so expensive, it's not playable. He probably should just cast that as an instant at the end of my turn. Probably forgot he had Leyline out. Starting to get a little bit laggy here. Alright, so I'm back up at 41. What do I have in my graveyard? A couple crappy creatures, I believe. I have a Twisted A-Bomb and a Masker Worm. Game has not been good to me so far. I'm, I don't like using scrying sheets during my upkeep. I guess right there it would have been fine, but generally I don't like it. Uh, who I'm going to use right now. Because you end up drawing something and then you want that mana. So at any time, Masked Warren can come back in and just kill his Riku. It's basically not even like a good card for him at this point. Balthor just chills, waiting for his time. And I've drawn so many lands this game. It's ridiculous. Stoticism is really annoying. It's one of those reasons I have Karn and um, Nevenerol Fisk in the deck. Cards like that are just insane. I'm not even going to use Balthor yet, There's just it's just not good enough. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Can I get buried alive? Yeah, good luck with that, buddy. I'm going to take... What do you got in this graveyard? Anything good? Yeah. I'm going to take Sepulchre Primordial. Runescar Demon. And... Kakusho. Go ahead, pop this, I guess I should have sacked my guy first, what do I want here, do you not have anything, oh I thought he had something, I'm an idiot. Totally thought he had something. Uh, that's fine. Go ahead and get Cabal Copper so I can just go nuts the next turn. Or I could just heal it right now, but I think that's probably fine.
because you have to basically just draw out of this immediately. And I don't know if there's anything even in the, his deck that can do it. Something like to take taking all my creatures would be good. You got something good. But it can't be that good, I mean. You're gonna kill everything? Is that what you're gonna do? Is a wrath of some sort? I mean, I'm at 38, so. <coughs> I'm guessing he's going to play that card that lets him play a sorcery for my deck. <coughs> <coughs> which I mean, <coughs> you know, a wrath of some sort. <coughs> In which case, I draw two cards, drain him for five, still have a five power dude on the board, <coughs> and he'd take two damage. Well, no, he wouldn't take two. But I can get them all back. <coughs> yeah, that was stupid getting the uh, Sepulchral Primordial. I thought he had a creature in his graveyard. Obviously, it would have been good in that case. Next time, I should look better. Um, I guess I should have taken uh, Shieldred, probably. Against Black decks, you take different different cards, though. Because you don't want them to exile a bunch of your good creatures. Blue, green, red decks have a harder time exiling graveyards than mono black decks. Not sure what he's doing. Interesting. So he played Spell Twine, targeting Reigns of Power and Beseech the Queen. Amazing. That might have been the best top deck I've ever seen. Alright, well, I'm going to stack this guy, I think. That way I take a, yeah, I have to stack that one. That was quite a top deck. Quite the top deck. What else I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this, bam, see what the top card of my library is. Could be worse. Now I'm going to F6. Do your thing. I'm at 43, so I'm not too worried about dying. I see, what is that, 16 plus 6 is 22, 26, 20, 28 on the board. So he'd still have to play like Overrun or something. If he has another Overrun though, I guess I could do it. That'd be pretty amazing if he was able to win off Reigns of Power two times in one game. Oh wait, with Reigns of Power I actually get this, so I don't even know if he'd be able to do it with Overrun. That changes the math a bit. And he's going slow. So yeah, apparently he's trying to choose a nine mana card. I can't even imagine what that could be. Yeah, that's pretty good. Does that make two? Yeah. You got enough to play it. Seems good. So if he ciphers it onto my guy, that seems bad. I guess you could cipher it onto the clone. So you could make a copy of this and then cipher it onto that. 
So next turn I'm going to play, if I live, Cabal of Coppers, Harvester of Souls, Mutilate, draw a bajillion cards, and then something. But I have so much land with Cabal Coppers and Urborg, it's going to be nuts. Know what he's doing. Yeah, shooter for that. That's what I expected. But you're out of mana now. Cipher on to the one you just made. But you're out of mana now. So I'm going to take. I'm going to block something. What am I going to block? I'm going to block this, a 6 power dude. So I would take 4, 10, 15. I'm going to take 20. I go down to 24. Oh yeah, this is totally fine. Is he still dead? I think he's still dead. He has to cipher onto one of He has to cipher onto the rune scar demon. Yeah. That's... I, I, I still think he's dead. What can I get? Zurin Orb? Um, oh wait, he gets to untap his mana with this guy. So maybe he's not dead. Maybe this is better than I thought. Because he gets to untap, so he'll have instant speed available to uh, do whatever the two spells he tutors up are. But I'm not dead either. So maybe he gets a fog or something like that. Whatever. Uh, that's pretty good. Didn't think of that. Kukusho. Alright, now we got ourselves a game. Do I want to do here? What I want to do here is play Harvest Dude. Harvester Guy. Then I'm going to attack with all my guys. Then I'm going to mutilate. Man, that was an awesome turn on his part. I hope he didn't get himself a counter spell. That would suck for me. So, it's not like it would be the end of the world. It just wouldn't be good. But I should have enough mana to be able to bring back Balthor, even. So, it's not like he'd be horrible. I could Slum Reaper, just get two Slum Reapers off. and Yeah, it wouldn't be horrible. I don't care what happens here. I'm just going to draw a bunch of cards. Generation time. It's really annoying that you have to click asceticism and then click the creature instead of just being instead of it just giving all the creatures regeneration, it regenerates the creatures. That's what's annoying. Uh, 
I guess just for MTGO functionality, it's, it's annoying, not for anything else. Don't mind if I do. Alright, 16 men in my pool. Start with mutilate. Be game actually because of uh, massacre worm. Oh no, because he's got that. Forgot. Close though. Alright, so he's at three. I have twelve mana. Take his last card. Should come close to doing it, I would think. Good. So I just cast, I just use Baltor at the end of turn and get everything back and I win. Just the, the cool thing with Baltor is what I was saying. My, my deck has a game plan it's to grind them out and it starts out slow but it gets to the point where every time I, 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 I'm able to use Baltor it's just insane. Like it's going to be right now. I mean, I have a ridiculous graveyard full of creatures that produce so much card advantage for me. There's no real way to keep up with it. <laughs> Blast from a sack. That was his tutored up card. It wouldn't have done anything. Because you can use Balthor at the end of turn. I'm not sure a top deck's going to help him unless he has a fog in hand. I don't even know what I'm doing. Pick a random card, it doesn't matter what I pick. Yikes. That's going to be painful. Alright. Make an attack. 
even if he has a fog, I have Kukusho. I can just sacrifice Kukusho. I also have 15 cards in hand. Thanks for watching, everybody.